I am human, I'm a person, I'm a complex being. I am human, I am spirit, I am more than I seem. I'm a diamond mountain. On April 27th, 1994, the world held its breath. The first democratic election in South Africa ended apartheid. One of the most inhumane systems of racial oppression was dismantled after decades of protest and resistance. How can a society heal from such atrocities? How can communities attend to the social, economic and spiritual wounds that apartheid had created? What does it mean to strive for new ways of communal living when history still bleeds through? How can individuals deal with disastrous memories in healing ways? From 93 until 98, I was chaplain to what was then called the Trauma Center for Victims of Violence and Torture. And it was in the period, um, the beginning of the democratic era in South Africa. Uh, it was a time when uh, it was being decided that we would have a Truth and Reconciliation Commission as one vehicle for South Africa to deal with its past and provide a bridge from the old order of apartheid into a democratic um, society. And before the commission even started, I asked the question, how many people will come to this commission? The answer was 23,000 people came, um, which we later found out. But my concern was, well, what about the rest of the country? Because my contention was that all South Africans had a story to tell. All South Africans had been affected by apartheid. Um, all South Africans carried stuff in us because of the past the nation had traveled. But it was not true that all South Africans were pathological. It was not true that all South Africans need a clinic, needed a, a clinical intervention. So uh, we needed to create spaces where South Africans of all sides of the struggle could tell each other their stories and deal with the past of the nation psychologically, emotionally, spiritually. And that led us to create a methodology that we called a healing of the memories workshop. And so that began uh, while I was part of the trauma center uh, and later gave birth to the uh, Institute for Healing of Memories. But it also grew, it grew on the one hand out of the reflection of myself and others on the past to the nation, but it also grew as a reflection, as I reflected on what had helped me to heal, because I had received a letter bomb in uh, April of 1990. And so obviously I'd also traveled my own journey of healing. And so that personal reflection, as well as the national reflection, were, if you like, the foundations of what became uh, the Institute for Healing of Memories. The Institute for Healing of Memories believes that all South Africans have been messed up by apartheid. Henceforth, the political and spiritual task at hand is to restore a sense of common humanity that had been so profoundly damaged by the distorted political logic that constructed racialized groups of people by setting them apart and by creating divisive hierarchies between them. Accordingly, one of the big challenges the Institute took on since then has been to foster sensibilities towards the vision of a common humanity. In all areas of the work, this vision of interconnectedness is prominent. It is clear, however, that such a humanist approach can only be life-giving when the history of apartheid is faced simultaneously on a personal and communal level. So, the Institute, the first principle, I think, or important uh, philosophy that the work that the work um, of the Institute is pinned on is that we are all spiritual beings and are therefore of infinite worth. And I think just that prime identity of our common humanity. 
And uh, because we believe that we're, in, we're spiritual beings, it be, means that the spirit can grow and it can also be damaged. And that's important in terms of the work that we do, because we talk about the physical and the psychological damage and pain, but we don't always talk about the spiritual damage, you know? And so it brings in that dimension when we talk about the spiritual pain. The other important uh, principle is that we can be both victim and victimizers. That the complexity of us being human and being spiritual beings is that sometimes in different times of our lives, we can be victims of situations. And at other times in our lives, we can be victimizers. And most of the time, we're both at the same time. Uh, we can be bullied um, at, at, at home by our sisters, our brothers, and we're a victim, and we go to school, and then we bully somebody else. Um, and it can all happen in the space of a day. So we are all of that, and so it's, it's understanding the complexity of, of what it means to be human, but also the impact that the actions that is done to us has on our own behavior and how we then see ourselves. Then the other important, I think, one is that we need to, that we all need to take responsibility for what has happened in our history and redeem it and take it forward. Yes, we were not, we didn't agree to that history, but history has happened. It is there, it sits in our lap. And so we all need to take responsibility for what we do with that history and how we take it forward. And linked to that is then facing history and facing ourselves, is to say that what has been our role in that history, you know? Um, and in that then facing who we are as, as a person. The principles of the Institute are put into practice in three areas. The Healing of Memories workshops, the community dialogues, and a youth program called Restoring Humanity. At the core of the workshops resides a practice of autobiographical storytelling. Participants are invited to share significant moments of their lives in which the intersection between their own personal story and the story of the nation comes to the fore. The listeners don't comment or judge. They try to be present as much as possible to what the other person is saying. This way, people become witnesses to each other's experiences. Oftentimes, the shared stories touch upon deep feelings of abandonment, anger and bitterness, yet also shame and guilt. Healing of memories is understood as an open-ended process in which poisoning emotions are released and responsibility for one's own actions and the deeds of others are acknowledged. It fosters an imagination that is realistic about the wounds and the scars that will remain. Simultaneously, it is a resourceful practice since it encourages people to discover and strengthen the potential for transformation in their own lives. The history of apartheid and the unresolved legacy of violence come up in all kinds of life issues. Over the years, the range of topics expanded. Participants deal with issues around HIV, AIDS, domestic violence or xenophobia. These are personal and highly political at the same time. The workshops evoke memories that are felt deeply and still have an impact on people's life in the present. Exercises are employed, such as drawing and creating rituals, that tap into the more unconscious dimensions of memory. The ritual that is created in the last segment of the workshop is especially dedicated to the release of negative emotions. It gives room for the participant to create hopeful images and symbols. The Institute for Healing of Memories initiates community dialogues. These dialogues emphasize the connection between personal and political issues. The second part is what we call a community healing program, which we do take people because we believe that the healing 
It always comes back to the individual. It always comes back to individual pain. But it is then about connecting your individual pain to collective pain, to community, to your nation, to the globe, global pain. And so the community healing project is, it takes place within communities, identified communities that we're working with, with local partners that is addressing some of the structural um, issues that causes pain. So in, in, the, in the Western Cape, yeah, we're working in a community which is called Dalft. We're working in a community at Lantis and Masipumalele, as well as the Noon. And then we get invited to do work in other individual con uh, communities like Mannenberg and Makassa and so on. But there's four communities that we consistently work with. As healing is a journey, learning is a journey, and you cannot have one-off things. So what we try to do is to engage with people over a period of time so that they have time to think through things, process things, come back to the next engagement with some new re renewed insights, renewed questions, new confusions, and then another facet and go on. Another important issue that came to the fore in recent years is the rising xenophobia in South Africa. Community dialogues in KwaZulu-Natal have addressed the xenophobic outbreaks against Somalians, Congolese or Nigerian migrants, refugees and asylum seekers. Like the dialogues we started running last year in, um, in April, we had a xenophobic attack which, which blew up in, in Durban, where foreign nationals were being beaten, were being killed with their South African nationality. So we saw it fit, says, they don't know the story of South Africans. They don't know the story of Congolese or Luanda or whatever. So we run these dialogues separately with uh, uh, foreign nationals and we run a, a dialogue with the South African nationals and we had a mixed dialogue. A mixed dialogue where people started listening from one another and we ran a healing of memories together, bringing these two parties together. The Institute for Healing of Memories was founded in order to address these profound challenges. These goals are also embedded in the third initiative. The Restoring Humanity project has three strategic objectives that reflect the overall mission of the Institute – healing, prevention and empowerment. I think of all, the healing of memory is also for young people, as I said, is also looking at our own healing and our own wounds. Because part of that, of the healing, is that our parents and grandparents when, were traumatized by the events that happened by the nation. And individually in our families, the, the, the youth were affected by that. Not necessarily they were there, but their parents, um, they were affected by what happened by their parents. But also part of the, the empowerment is able to understand what are the aspects that contributed to that so that we could able to then move forward and find preventative ways so that we don't repeat uh, the future again and build a more kinder and gentler future for ourselves. Because of our history, you know, history dictates where we are and history dictates where we want to go. We work in a way in which we bring diverse communities together because they've been separated for so long. So they can listen to one another, they can get to know one another, they can get to talk to one another and, um, and learn together and create what they want for the future together. So we work in a way where it is about moving people physically from communities to communities into spaces where they normally would not go um, and into places that they that their parents did not have access to. And sometimes it's very simple things. It could be a beach, because during apartheid, the beaches were separated, you know? So it is good for young people to know that though you might think things haven't changed, you are sitting on a beach that 20 years ago, your mother could not walk on. Your father could not swim in, you know? So when you say, oh, nothing has changed, no things have changed. The Restoring Humanities project also helps young people to come to terms with difficult questions. It gives them a space to talk, the same it was for me when I came to the Institute for the Healing of Memories. It gives them a space of a family and where they could be able to talk to one another. It 
um, when these young people come together, they don't know one another at all. So sometimes it's very comfortable for them to talk to a group of strangers, so-called strangers, and, and actually let go. The Healing of Memories work has its roots in South Africa. Nowadays, it encompasses many countries, perspectives and voices. It taps into the desire to break the cycle of violence and to attend to the needs of the human family in generous and gentle ways. I am human, I'm a person, I'm a complex being. I am human, I am spirit, I am more than I seem. I'm a diamond multifaceted, I bring every part of me. This is who I am. I bring my ancestry, I bring spirit strong, I bring all of me, I am history, I am values and belief, I am love divine, this is all of me, I am human. Thank you.